Good morning. Good morning, Shiloh's family, our church family, and friends and family that hasn't gotten here yet. So good to see you. So good to be with you today. What a wonderful, beautiful day that the good Lord has given us. To, become, to come into a house of worship and be able to rejoice and be in His presence. We can be in His presence right where we're at because if we're confined to where we're at, nursing homes and hospitals, He's there. He's there and He will stay with you as long as you ask Him. He will be in your presence. The question is, how long do we want Him to stay? Do you have something that you want to watch uh, in the next hour on TV? Is, this, is there a conversation on, the, on your cell phone that you want to follow up on? It's all a matter of our priorities. How long His presence will remain with us. I am learning each and every day that I hunger for each and every moment and hour for His presence to be with me. Today, I'm, I want to speak on is, how is it today? And I think that follows up with what I just said and talked about. Where are we at? And how is it with you today? Are you satisfied with where you at today in your life? I don't want to leave from here. And it's been laying on my heart heavy this week through a conversation. I don't want to leave from here and have nothing to show for it. I know the older generation when I was young, that they would say he worked all his life and he ain't got nothing to show for it today. It can happen on a matter of becoming sick in the older age and you're not able to keep it up and you lose all what you worked for. It can be a matter of you putting materialistic things first and you made it your God and in the end you lost it. And you don't have anything to show for it in the older age. Or for that matter, it could be in mid-age because you didn't have your priorities in order. That's what I want to ask you. How is it today with you? Are you satisfied? of where you at in your walk of life. I want to say a quick prayer this morning. Father, I thank You for this time. I thank You for giving me this, how is it today? Because I was there one time in my life where You could have, where you could have just walked up and said, Terry, how is it today? Father, I don't want to talk about how it was, but I'll sure tell you how it is today because you are first in my life. And I thank you, and I want to share it with others. I want to share that love with others. I want for their today to be a day they'll never forget. Father, it's your grace, mercy, and blessings I ask for in the name of Jesus to the Father. I say amen this morning. Amen and amen. How is it today? I want to go to Galatians. I mean, uh, yes, Galatians chapter <clears throat> 6 verse 1. And it says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespasses, you who are spiritual, you who are spiritual, 
is talking about me, proclaiming that I've been born again, and it's time for me to show it. Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself least you also be tempted. I just got done saying, I knew how it was a while back. I, I know how it was when my todays consisted of what I made them be. But today, I ask God, protect me, Father. Show me the way. Let me be your hands and feet. That's the encouragement that He wants us to give those that think that everything is okay today. And it may be today. It may be at this moment, but let me tell you something. It can change in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And you could be down and not being able to get back up on your feet. But without our Lord Jesus Christ, we're on our own to a degree. What are you going to do then? I can think back if I get in that position today, not whom I used to be, but today. I go back and I fall on what the Lord has said. I will supply your every need. Somebody will be coming my way to help me when I'm on flat on my back. Somebody will be coming for me, to me, if I am in jeopardy of losing what I thought I had accumulated. Somebody will be there to hear and maybe give the advice that the Lord has told him to, to say. So remember, I can try and guess how things are going with you, but if I don't really know, you could tell me anything. Or everything is great. Good. Okay. Don't cover up what you don't feel. Don't pretend that it's great but you know in your heart you'd love for it to be better. That better comes with a better life. That better comes when you got peace in the home. And I'm not talking about that enjoyable peace, flesh peace. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the peace that our God Almighty has. It's not for sale. You can't buy it. It only comes through Him. His package. I call it. That's the only way that that peace comes is through Him. And I want you to remember that because you'll be able to see it all over you once you receive it. The way you talk, the way you walk, it'll be entirely different. In verse 2, <clears throat> I want to go to Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. And with this, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I thought about that. And thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Now we just got done talking about living a life in the, of, the, of the flesh and thinking that everything is, is good and great. But I'm talking about victory now. As the old song is, the victory's been won. The battle's over. I'm looking for a victory when it's all said and done. What we accomplish here on this earth that's temporary might be a victory in our eyes that we've accumulated some. Look at, look at what I've accumulated. But what are others going to say about it after we're gone? He worked himself to death for that. 
And look, they're not even taking care of what he left. They're wasting it. All the vehicles, big house, yard needs cutting. He wouldn't allow that. But you won't hear him mention anything about he sure made a change in his life once he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and he was born again. That's what you want to be left with knowing, being known of. He made, a, he made a change in his life when Jesus gave him a second opportunity. Because all the material things won't matter. Because they'll look at it and they'll forget it. But when they go to mention your name, they'll say, that, that man sure loved the Lord. That lasts forever. That gives you eternity of life forever. Remember that. Are you headed that way? How is it today with you? Have you got victory? Are you going to have eternal life? What you had here is not important. It's what you have inside of you that you're going to take with you. In verse 3, and I'm going back to 1 Corinthians again, 15, chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be stubborn, be planted, immovable, immovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor just got done talking about you working seven days a week. And you ain't got nothing to show for it. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You put your labor in the Lord by going out, loving your neighbor, helping your neighbor, going to hospitals and seeing those that are sick that can't get out or are they going under a condition and you pray with them. Go to the rest homes. Find something that the Lord will allow you to go and do. He will put you in a place that's comfortable and that you've got a gift from Him that you are able to leave a mark. When your name is spoken, they say He was faithful going to a nursing home. He was faithful helping the community out at church and every time we had a function and he was there. That is what we'll be remembered by. And then when somebody says, how is it going today? You can say I'm blessed today because the Lord gave me a second opportunity to be able to enjoy life, not work myself to death, And I have something to show for it. Sit down and let me tell you about it. Of what the Lord has done for me. I pray that you take this. And I want to say this because the Lord has given it to me to, to leave with. You've got a family today or you're getting ready to get married or you, you're going through a, a marriage situation or you've just come to a point in your life that you thought you had what you needed but really when you go to looking at it, it's not as important to you as you thought it was. So actually, what you thought that you wanted people to see, it's not even worth showing. But something is worth showing, and that is if they can see our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ, in you. Because I'm going to tell you who else will be looking at it. Your children, your wife, your husband. They'll see that new you before really you can get it out to others and it be exposed. Because once you go out the door and come back in, They'll see it. Something's happened. 
And then when that day comes when you get of an age and you no longer might can go out and do for others, they'll come and do for you. They'll come and show respect for you because of what you did when you could. And your children will say, my daddy didn't have a whole lot when he left them here, but he sure loved the Lord. And then they're going to pass it on to their children. Let me tell you, it's not about the materialistic things that you accumulate here. It's about what God accumulates within you before you leave here. Because I received it from my parents. We had God first in our homes. We put God first. And it helped me through life watching my mom and dad make a transition over to instead of what they were searching for that would please someone here, they were working, started working on pleasing what would please God. I pray that you start that today. I pray that you'll get up, find you a church, or turn on a, 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 a minister on your phone or TV, or better yet, you just sit down and, and, and make an announcement. Dad or Mom, today is a new day. I'm not whom I used to be this morning, but as of right now, I'm working to make a difference. I am working so that I can tell you how good our God is. How good He is. So when you go to work tomorrow, when you wake up, and somebody asks you, how you doing today? You tell them I'm blessed. And I'm looking for more of it. We're looking for you here at Shiloh on Ultra Mill Road, 2271. Altry Mill Road, Godwin, North Carolina. If you don't have a church this morning, you've got time to get here. We've got Ladies' Day. And I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to it. But I'm looking forward to more than that is, is how is it today with you? And if I could run into you, if I could come to you face to face, I would love for you to tell me, I tell you, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Oh, thank you, Jesus, this morning. We love you here at Shiloh. We look forward to seeing you. God bless you. And I pray that today is the last day you without the Father first in your life.